Good evening Griffith families, Mr Grubog here. I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about what we'll be looking at as part of our creative curriculum in Spring 1. So our topic for this term is Fallen Fields. We'll be exploring all about the First World War. Today, I'm just going to briefly talk about the main focuses of this, which are our humanity subjects, history and geography. As part of our history, we're going to be investigating and exploring the causes of the First World War and what led up to the Great Four Year War occurring. We'll also be creating a timeline of significant events during the First World War and present our uh, findings in a wide variety of ways. Finally, in history, we'll be rese researching significant people of the First World War to understand their significance. This would be a great thing to work at at home where you could have a look at, say, someone like Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the man who was assassinated, which ultimately led to the events of the First World War. Now, in geography, we're going to be actually creating a map showing the central powers, the allied powers and neutral powers during the First World War. Again, something that would be really useful for you to do at home would be to explore who were the central powers, who were the allied powers and where they are on a global map. Finally, we'll be using maps, atlases and uh, computer mapping to make comparisons between modern Europe uh, before the World War I started in 1914 and modern day Europe. Countries such as Austria-Hungary, who were central to the conflict of 1914, are no longer around today. Are there any other countries that have changed? How much has the landscape changed since then? Thank you so much. Morning everyone, Mr Brewcock here. Since no one's in school today, given that the heating is out, hence the hat, I thought I'd just quickly tell us what we're doing uh, in Spring 1 in Maths. So we'll be finishing off our work on fractions, that will also be looking at decimals and percentages, and will ultimately lead to us converting fractions into decimals into percentages. For example, 1 half is equal to 0 0.5, which is equal to 50%. Our other big element of spring one is looking at multiplication and division. Now, we have already been multiplying by powers of 10, but we also now need to go over and look at our formal method of long multiplication and our formal method of short division. I'll go over a couple of examples of those now. So, to begin with, we'll look at multiplication. So, if I just take the number 1,000, 234 and I'm going to multiply it by 12. Now, to begin with, we want to multiply the two or the two ones in 12 by our top number. We go from two to four and then move to the left. So to begin with, it's the ones times the ones, then the ones times the tens, then the ones times the hundreds, and the ones times the thousands. So, two multiplied by four equals eight. Two multiplied by three, six. Two multiplied by two is four. And two multiplied by one is two. Now, this number here, is 1,234 multiplied by 2. We now need to multiply 1,234 by our 10 that we have there. Now to begin with, whenever we multiply by a multiple of 10, our answer always ends in zero. It's just a fact, it always is the case. So I'm gonna begin by putting a zero in the ones column. We know that it's gonna start with a zero. And from then, just like we did before, we go across the number. So it'll be 10 times four, 10 times three, 10 times two, 10 times one, or 10 by our ones, 10 by our tens, 10 by our hundreds, and 10 by our thousands. So to begin with, well, 1 times 4 is 4. Notice that because we've put that 0 there in the 1's column, since that 1 represents a 10, it is 10 times 4, which gives us the answer of 40. Okay, next. 
1 times 3, 1 times 2, and 1 times 1. Now, our final step is to add these two values together. So 8 plus 0 is 8. 6 plus 4 is 10. That's 0 there, carry the 1. 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 1 is 8. 2 plus 2 is 4, and 1 plus nothing is 1. Giving us a final answer of 14,808. That is a really basic look at our multiplication. We will now take a quick look at division. Now, with short division for year five, we will be looking at dividing four digit numbers by a one digit number. So, let's say I have the number, I don't know, 6,725, and I'm going to divide it by five. The first thing I'm going to look at is I go to my thousands column and I need to see how many times five goes into six. Well, if I draw six markers up here and make a group of five, I can make one group of five with one remainder. So I cross out my six and I write that one remainder there. It moves along because that is 1,000 that's left. So I take that over and that's 10 one hundreds that have been taken over. Now, how many times does five go into 17? That'll be three. There's five, 10, 15. 20 doesn't fit into 17, so it only goes in three times with a two remainder. How many times does five go into 22? Well, five times four equals 20 with a two remainder. And finally, how many times does five go into 25? Five times with no remainder. So 6,725 divided by five equals 1,345. We're we'll going into all of this in much more detail in spring one. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Griffin families. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about our English for the next half term. Last half term, we began reading a book called Holes by Louis Sacker, and we're going to continue with that as in our reading um, for this half term. We'll be using the, the book Holes to um, answer questions. We'll be learning how to retrieve questions. We'll be making inferences, which is what we can pull from a text without it actually stating um, the, the question. And we'll also be looking at strategies to help us understand what words mean uh, just by looking at um, the text. So we're looking at more complex words now we're in year five. For our writing, we're going to be writing a newspaper report. This is also going to be based on holes, an excerpt from holes. Um, and we're going to be looking at the layout of a newspaper. How does it, how is it set out? What makes a newspaper report stand out? We're going to look at the features found within that as well. Well, we're going to be using direct and reported speech. They're both really, really useful in a newspaper report. And the difference is direct speech, basically, you use speech marks. Reported speech, you don't. Uh, we're also going to be looking at sh a shift in formality. A newspaper report is basically a formal piece of writing. However, it's nice sometimes to bring in a bit of a shift. And we can do that by using quotations in a newspaper report, it's easy to put that we have a statement from a witness, and then that will then become less formal, a shift in formality, a really good skill to have. Um, also, if you want to be able to help your children with a newspaper report, it'd be great if they could have a look at one, either online or actually a physical newspaper. Have a look at the layout. What kind of language does it, um, does it have inside it? Our topic for this half term is actually World War One, and another piece of work that we're going to be looking at this half term is a double page spread in our topic books, but it is a piece of English writing. We're going to be looking at facts and figures, and we're going to be concentrating on organisational skills such as subheadings, we might use bullet points, a whole range of things there. 
All of these will have facts about the Great War, so actually, if you want to help the children there, it would be wonderful if they could research the First World War, have a look at some of the things that happened, and then have a look at some of the language. Can we find any vocabulary that is sub subject specific? That means it's, it's language, it's vocabulary that is only really useful about the First World War. Um, also, on my own, there is a set of books, there's a, a lot of books about World War I, so maybe when the children are reading on my own, they could have, perhaps have a look at some of the World War I books and Kill Two Birds with One Stone, the effect, do some reading, do some research, that would be really helpful. Another book that I could, get, I could recommend that the children read um, is set in the First World War. It's a book called War Horse by Michael Borpergo. He's also famous for writing other books that are connected with the First World War. There are other books available as well. But the children, if they read, if they actually read um, a, a fiction book, they can learn a lot about the First World War as well. And it's all very useful for their English for this half term. Thank you very much.